1994 Toyota Camry four-cylinder ECU repair repair attempt like I said the symptom on this car is high idle the idle is commanded up at uh, 2000 rpm all the time and if you look at the idle air control motor it's just given full full power full on command the whole time so we have a leaky capacitor which is kind of common in these older ECUs you can see what's going on here the electrolyte has leaked out of this electrolytic capacitor and um, it's become conductive and probably shorted several of these traces together maybe eaten some of them so these are I've had about 80% luck repairing these. Um, you just have to take a lot of time cleaning and uh, replacing the capacitor and checking every trace using a good headset magnifier. And let's get it apart and start on it. This is a 47 microfarad at 63 volts. That's kind of an interesting value. Uh, none of the other ones look like they're leaking. These all look okay. The Honda ECUs of this era are sort of the same thing. Of course, these tantalum teardrops, they don't leak. They just short at some point. But all of this looks good. So checking that capacitor with the cap wizard, it's measuring 15 ohms, which is dead I went through and checked all the rest of the capacitors they're all good very good and this stuff is almost like burnt like you took a torch and hit the board and I'm a little bit worried about this surface mount thing right here I don't know what this is See this? This is a like a plastic conformal coating, and unfortunately, the spooge from the capacitor got underneath it. And um, and like these little traces right here that you see, you have to ohm every single one of these out and make sure that they're not open. So it's time consuming, but I've had pretty good luck fixing these. I think if I had one of these cars, I would probably be preemptively inspecting and possibly recapping the ECU. Of course, the electrolyte actually becomes conductive, and is that another chip component? It becomes conductive, and it shorts the traces together. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. I might need to lift these capacitors off and clean underneath them. Let me work on it. Okay, I took the other two capacitors off. Now it's just about cleaning and inspecting the traces. This one doesn't look all that bad. Okay, well, I take that back. This thing was eaten up, and this side was totally gone, and I don't know what that was. So maybe I can figure it out. It looks like a capacitor. Okay, so there's two traces here this one on the inside is missing so we have to replace from here and I traced it down it comes over to here and this the capacitor wizard is good for this tracing these these wires until they go away the capacitor here is a bit of a mystery I, I don't know I don't even know where it went well I was trying to measure that little chip capacitor by holding it on here 
and it slipped and it flew into the air so it's gone forever besides I wasn't getting a reading off of it anyway but so I don't know what to do with this um, the third pin goes directly to that the third or fourth pin I don't know it goes directly to that I see and yeah the third pin you can see there exactly what's going on so the third pin goes to that capacitor and that capacitor only so I'm not really quite sure what to do there's other capacitors in this circuit but I don't necessarily want to start removing other capacitors and measuring the value do I just put like a point one in there I got these two capacitors reinstalled I replaced that broken trace uh, with this and I'm double checking using the capacitor wizard because it's great for uh, checking low low ohm loads and yeah I'm I'm good here uh, the mystery is a missing capacitor now these capacitors are labeled with numbers like a a4 a5 j4 trying to see if I can show you with my magnifying glass here so that looks like this is a3 a4 so we look at that here on this chart and you know a3 is uh, a thousand picofarads or is that nanofarads I think it's value in picofarads so what if I don't know if that's decoupling or if that's a timing thing if it's a timing thing we gotta have the right cap if it's just a decoupling thing then we could put anything in there that's bigger and it will decouple that but it's weird that that one pin on the IC is dedicated to that capacitor only that kind of lends me to think that it's a timing thing which yeah we can't just stick anything in that I'm going with a 0 .01 103 here I don't know I'm just taking a guess I guess what I'll do is I'll take a look at the emissions on the vehicle. See, if, well, if it idles properly, I'll pop it on dyno and take a look at the emissions. See if it's in good closed loop and and uh, the NOx isn't too high. That'll give us, a, you know, an idea. It would be interesting if this capacitor had something to do with timing advance, and all of a sudden the timing was advanced 20 more degrees and the thing was pinging like crazy and the NOx emissions were out of control so I don't know I'll, I'll, I'll see what happens all I had was a hundred at a hundred I guess it'll fit in there won't it yeah it'll fit in there okay good all that is is a filter it just goes from positive to negative so a little extra filtering won't hurt I don't know I feel good about everything except that chip capacitor not knowing the value and just tacking a 0 .01 in there but I, I don't know what else to do I guess I'm gonna take it and try it and see if it works of course I'm starting to wonder if I should have used a 0.1 microfarad in place of that a chip capacitor that was eaten up but you know that's the problem with these things is there's no schematics available the chips are all you can't just look the chip up and get an idea of the circuit I guess I could try that but you know, all this stuff is just proprietary in these things and maybe certain people with certain access or whatever can get schematics but this yeah, this car is done expired and should have been gone a long time ago. So, looks like most of these chips are made by Nip and Denso or Denso as they're called today. There's a Denso chip. So, you know, made made by automotive for automotive. 
All right, I got it plugged back in. I'm not the one that took it out, so we shall see what happens here. Well, that seems a little bit too low. Starting it presumably cold and it's uh, 400 RPM. I'm surprised it'll idle that low. Let me make sure they actually got the idle air motor plugged in and they don't. Okay, so we need to plug this in. The idle air motor's on the bottom of the throttle body. Okay. Well, that's looking happier. It actually looks like it's controlling it. See, let's turn the AC on. Okay, it did not really idle up there. In fact, it drops down. That's not right. Let's go to... Okay, we put it in drive. It idles up. Turn the AC off. So it's not really idling up on an AC request, but I'm not going to I'm not going to pay too much attention to that. Let's see. Let's do a uh, 8 horsepower load. We will Looks like it's in closed loop. Okay. Make sure the check engine light works. And it does, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it for a little ride here. Look at the Knox. Knox is 1800. Okay, so the catalytic converter is heating up and it's... Uh, just going to take it for a drive here and see if the check engine light comes on. So the idle seems a little low to me with the AC on. That's AC on in drive. I'm going to turn the AC off. It seems like it should kick that idle up a little bit for um, the AC request. Uh, this looks okay. could need a blambu blands. The blambu lands. Unplug the EGR. Un unplug it. We're going to unplug the EGR.
watching the knocks. This this number right here. Okay, plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it back in? Yeah, plug it in. Yeah, it's working. I don't know, you know, it seems pretty good actually. The ticket will be to try it in the morning and see if it idles up with the engine cold. This... I, I, I think when you turn this on it should kick it up a couple hundred RPM, not down. I don't know. It's a hell of a lot better than it was. There is a separate valve right here that can controls the idle for the air conditioner and the computer is not actuating it. It's not grounding it so there's still something wrong in that computer and uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, if the customer complains about it then we'll have to try and find a new ECU that isn't as eaten up and recap it. Yeah, there's this thing right here, which goes right to, uh, basically connects right to uh, pin one of the ECU. So ECU is not grounding that. So I was thinking I could find that pin that drives that air conditioning idle up solenoid on here and then trace it back to whatever driver transistor drives it and then follow that back and then I looked on eBay and these ECUs on eBay are extremely abundant and they're selling for $24 with free shipping so being in that we don't know that capacitor that that little chip capacitor it's just not worth my time to keep going with this. I'm just going to get one off eBay.